Hello everybody, this is Amherstrecker here. Today I've got a Glock 32 Gen 4, which is chambered in 357 SIG. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis X and Core Belts. You'll find a link that you can sign up for Big Daddy Unlimited. They actually have things in stock and usually at a lower price than other places. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links. It will often save you money, never will cost you any additional money, and helps the channel. Thank you. 357 SIG is a little unique. I've got one right here in that most pistol cartridges are not necked. 357 SIG, and there's a few others, but the majority aren't. They start with a 10 millimeter case, trim it down, and then neck it down to 9 millimeter. So you've got a 40 size case, uh, 9 millimeter bullet. This happens to be 125 grain. So that's what the round looks like. Now I'm going to get rid of that before I pick up the gun so that we don't have any live ammo on the table. So that round is gone. Now we'll pick up the gun and we'll talk about it a little bit. This is unloaded. Now the principle behind 357 SIG, which Glock did not invent that, but Glock has the kind of the widest caliber diversity of the various manufacturers, so they have guns chambered in it. They've got the 32 that you see here, a 31 and a 33. So they've got the subcompact, compact like you see here, and then a full size. But 357 SIG gives you the caliber of 9mm for the bullet, but it's going a lot faster. So 9mm, typically 115 grain bullets, going about 1180 feet per second for just regular federal, you know, regular range ammo, and gives you about 356 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. With the 357 SIG, you've got 125 grain bullets, a little bit heavier, going probably about 1350 for about 508 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. So you've got a lot more power in that same small footprint, more power than 40 and 45. Doesn't quite catch up with 357 Magnum, and it doesn't catch up with 10 millimeter. Standard 10 millimeter, just regular range ammo, is about 700 foot-pounds of energy. But what you do is you have a Glock 19 size gun, 9 millimeter, 40 size gun, and with a lot more power. The cartridge did enjoy a period of pretty good popularity. Of several law enforcement agencies were using it, and it was actually quite powerful. Now it's starting to wane. It's not quite as power popular because there are other calibers that have kind of caught up with it in the pistol. Now, of course, when you get into the revolver magnum cartridges, you're still going to be well in excess of it. So you're starting to see it less often. It's getting a little harder to find. Glock still has chambered guns in it, and of course they've done the Gen 4. We'll see if they do a Gen 5 on it. But this being a Gen 4, it's got all the Gen 4 features. It's got the RTF type texture, the little pyramids. It has the replaceable back strap, so you have no back strap, and then there's two more back straps you can put on it, and you can get the extended beaver tail back straps that go with it. So you've got all of those Gen 4 features, reversible magazine catch, as long as you use Gen 4 magazines. The uh, Gen 4 style slide stop slide release, single slot Picatinny rail, of course texture in front of the trigger guard, and you've got the standard safeties. It's got the inertial safety and the trigger, and it's got the internal drop safety. So it's got all of the features that you would expect for any other Glock. And whether you like them or not, the UDOT sights. But they're just standard Glock sights, so they can be easily replaced with whatever, True Glow or any other sights that uh, you like. Like all other Glocks, it's kind of just universally compatible. This one comes with dedicated 357 magazines. These hold 13 rounds. You can use the 40 caliber magazines, but there's a caveat. With that bottleneck cartridge, there's a difference between a 357 mag and a 40 mag. And it's kind of hard to see. There's a little nuance. If you look at the follower, right here, there's a notch there and there's a notch there on both sides. And if I turn this sideways and I'll see if I can get you to see it, there's a little ridge right there inside the magazine body that fits into that gap. And what that does is helps keep that bottleneck cartridge aligned so that the cartridge can't twist, which in a 40 magazine, that bottleneck area is unsupported. It's a nuance. It's just a hair different. Uh, I did run this gun with a 40 caliber magazine and it did run flawlessly. So what it kind of comes down to, if you want to have a range day, a practice day, do whatever you want to do, use whatever magazine you got, a 40 magazine or a 357 magazine, pretty much interchangeable. 
But if you're going to use it for defense, if you're going to use it in a situation where it absolutely positively has to work, and having a round turn a little bit and jam the gun would be totally unacceptable, then use the real magazines, the, the actual 357 magazines that are designed to work properly with that cartridge. From the standpoint of other features, like, like all Gen 4s, there are no forward sli uh, serrations, but it does have nice rear serrations, and it's comfortable to hold. For me, it fits my hand right, even the little finger grooves fit right in where they need to in my fingers. With the magazine inserted, you've got a full three finger grip. Like other Glocks, you can use the larger magazines in it, and the, the long, uh, longer 22 round magazine in 40 caliber will function in it. Again, I wouldn't use it for defensive purposes. And take down is just as easy as any other Glock. Give it a little squeeze, pull the tabs, take it apart. It's a Gen 4, so of course it has a dual, dual recoil spring. Pull that puppy out. Now here's where things get a little unique. When you look at the barrel, I'm going to light this barrel up. I'm going to try to light it up from this end and get some light in there. You'll see it's got two steps. So there's the chamber, and then there's another step for that little bottleneck piece, and then a final step that actually is the barrel. And there's your bottleneck cartridge chamber and barrel assembly. If I flip it around, of course you'll see it does have a nice kind of machine polished feed ramp. It's not a mirror. And it's the polygonal rifling that Glocks are known for. And the barrel, of course, is well machined and well constructed. Most of what Glock does, they, they do right. Looking at the frame, internally, you won't really notice any difference. Of course, it has an ejector for 40 because the, the base end of the case, at this end, it's the same as 40 and 10 millimeter, that end of the case. Rails at the back, rails at the front, everything pretty much routine Glock. Most of the Glocks, when you take them apart, they all look the same on the inside, and they all function the same. Get this turned the way I want to turn it. Of course, you have your drop safety plunger, so it is drop safe. Everything's smooth and machined, nothing fancy, nothing extra. With Glocks, they don't do anything that isn't part of actually just making the thing work. But it's everything is well done and nice and smooth. Reassembly is relatively easy. Drop the barrel back into place. Pop the recoil spring into place. It's kind of important to make sure you center it. For the most part, they're self-centering, but you need to make sure it's centered. And back in business. Easy to live with. Uh, the recoil on this is stout. You know you're popping something off. But unlike 40, it doesn't have that twist, that characteristic twist that 40 has that actually to me makes 40 a rather unpleasant recoil. It's a stout recoil, but it's it's a nice recoil. It kind of reminds me a little bit of 10 millimeter in the way it feels, but it's just a hair sharper. When it when it hits, it's just a little bit sharper hit. But very manageable and very easy to shoot well. And with your typical Glock trigger, which we'll go ahead and demonstrate here, so you've got minimal take up a little bit more of a longer wall, and then the break. Nice short reset, you're right on the wall, then a little bit more pull through the wall, and then the break. If you put a minus, minus connector in there, it lightens it up by about a pound. It's five and a half pounds, as you see it here in factory configuration, and that wall gets a little bit sharper. But overall, I like lock triggers. I'm able to use them well. They're consistent for me, so I'm able to get good follow-up shots. And I actually enjoyed shooting this thing. It's, it's different. So when you look at different calibers, it's not just a, a bang and a push. They all have different characteristics of how they feel when they recoil, how well you can get back on target. And I found it pretty easy to do with this one. Of course, I can't finish the video without talking about the dimensions. Basically, it's a Glock 19 from a dimensional standpoint. 7.28 long with the flush magazine in it. 5.04 tall. 1.26 wide at the thickest point, back right through here where the controls are. And it weighs 24.34 ounces with an empty magazine. So it's not heavy, it's not big. If you can carry a Glock 19, you can carry this. Anywhere a Glock 19 would fit, this will fit. And because it's the same form factor, you should have compatibility with holsters and everything else that goes along with it. And that's one of the advantages of 357 SIG, potentially over either 45 gap, 45 ACP, or 10 millimeter is you've got this smaller form factor that is truly that Glock 19 size. Overall, if you're looking for a little bit more power, 
but you still want to stay in a smaller form factor, especially when you move into the subcompact. They've got a subcompact version that's the same physical size as a 26 or a 27. This would be a good choice if you're looking for a little bit more power. Just be prepared for a little bit more recoil. Other than that, I kind of enjoy this gun. If you like our videos please give us a thumbs up share subscribe click that bell up there to be notified if you do check us out on facebook patreon instagram twitter kind of everywhere and thank you